One of the more common problems we see in dogs as they get older are tumors called meibomian gland adenomas. This is the tumor of the meibomian gland, and what it does is it creates a sty, a very painful situation on the eyelid. And so the back of this we can see where a sty is starting to form. So I'm going to show you guys an easy way to get rid of these things. Um, this pup was given morphine at half dose at 0.25 megs per kg. Uh, just enough to keep the, you know, take the edge off. Also, this dog has a history of epilepsy, so we want to avoid things like ACE promosine and some of the dogs that could, could bring that on. So we're going to do this just with half dose of morphine and a local. So what I'm going to do is put the chelation forcep on here, and then we'll tighten up. Now, I always muzzle anything that's local. I don't want to take any chance that, that the person holding or the veterinarian could get bit. So my, my rule of thumb is anytime we're doing something with a local, the muzzle's on there. This dog is not a nasty dog. It's a really nice dog. So you can see right there is the meibomian gland adenoma. Now we caught this one early before it formed a big site. Now I take an insulin syringe, and it takes very, 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 very little amount of local to do this procedure. So I'm just going to take it. I'm going to just inject right into here. And a lot of times you'll see the insulin, the the lidocaine, come right out of where the the meibomian glands arrive, and I can see it starting to blab up. So I know I'm right in the gland where I need to be. Okay, so it didn't take much lidocaine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to carve this, this little meibomian gland out of here. Create a little trough where the meibomian gland is. Okay, that's right at the eyelid margin. I start there because I want to be really careful that I don't create much of a defect. Okay, and then we're just going to scrape this tumor right out of here. And you literally scrape that down until you get down to shiny tissue coming out of the meibomian gland area. I'm going to reposition this chelation forceps so that we have a little bit less of that tissue blebbed up. It'll make it just a little easier for us to see what we're doing. See how much easier that's going to be to look at and see what we're doing. So now we're just going to carve this right out of here. Right down to shiny. The shiny tissue gives you the level that you have to carve down to. You have less of a defect when you're done. When we come back in and look at this dog a year later, you won't even be able to tell that the surgery was ever done. You won't be able to tell which eye. Now you have to warn people that the cryo surgery will depigment the eyelid margin. 95% of the time that pigment comes back. Every now and then it stays. So if it's a show dog, you have to be much more careful. So there we carved it out. And we're all the way down to this shiny tissue. Okay, that's as far down as we need to go. Okay, now we're going to take this liquid nitrogen canister, which you guys can get through Butler Shine. And I'm just going to take it, I'm going to Put a probe on there and freeze. The sound bothers them a little bit. And the fact that that cold stuff was spraying on his foot. There we go. Just a good bleb on there. I have less than a 2% reoccurrence rate. And I won't change this, the aperture of the eyelid margin at all. It'll stay the same so you don't have a conformational defect at all. Now you want a slow thaw, so you want to make sure you leave this on until it's, it's freed, en freed up enough to thaw. If you accidentally have this flip up and touch the cornea, don't pull it off because you'll peel part of the cornea off. Just let it thaw and it'll be fine. It'll scare you, but it'll be fine. So far I've done several thousand of these. Never had where I killed the cells on the other side, so I never had a permanent defect. Some people recommend two freezes. I only do one freeze and again have less than 2% reoccurrence rate. This dog's probably just a little bit more calm than, than most would be, but I've only had one dog that I can think of that I couldn't do with just a local and a train, and that was a nasty Rottweiler that we couldn't get out of the cage. Now we see when when it turns pink there a little bit, then that's when we know that it's it we can take the chelation forcep off. Again, by leaving the forcep on for a little longer, it just allows for a, a slow thaw, which gives us less reoccurrence.
Now I always have the dog stay in the clinic for a couple hours afterwards because this thing's going to bleed a lot. There won't be anything tied off, so this thing's going to bleed a lot. Um, some people are using laser to remove these. There's only one ophthalmologist that I found. There's an ophthalmologist at Kansas State that uses laser. Everybody else I know is using cryo. The cryo unit is very inexpensive, and so it's, it pays for itself really, really quickly. Okay, now we'll take it off, and you're going to see this thing's going to bleed, and it would just scare people if, the, if you sent their dog home with this bleeding, bleeding mess. So we'll just put a two by two on there. Paul, if you want to grab a two by two, we'll just put a two by two on there, and you can put a little pressure on a dog that's just nice. You can just put a little pressure on there for a little bit and allow it to stop. That's it.